So what are we doing here today? Well, what I have here is a cold steel tie light. Here's one outside the vise. It is an enormous dagger. That's all this is. It's big. It's got 100% a dagger blade. It's got about this much that fits in the clamp on a wicked edge. Now, somebody may else may know a super trick to this. I've kind of tried everything to put a decent edge on this. These aren't cutting knives. These are stabbing knives. That's all that these are for. So, I am attempting to sharpen this one. And wow, I've done everything from putting in my little paper chalks, I guess the little pieces here and to tighten it up because this clamp, and I don't know if I change the clamp, I've got other clamps. If I change the other clamp, if I could get further up here, bring the knife back. Uh, I've done this. I put, I put these in there to try to gather up where I could grip. This is the Wicked Edge Gen 3 Pro. Uh, looks like the bevel or the edge basically on this was like 25 degrees. It's sharp, but right here, starting right there, I can start feeling a burr right in there that I can't get off. There's no burr on this side anywhere, but I go down the blade, no burr, no burr, burr right in here. The last inch or inch or so, three quarters of an inch. Now that doesn't mean it's not sharp, but one thing the Wicked Edge and all these angled sharpeners do is they make you a micromanager by the way that these work. Okay, maybe one of the whetstone hand sharpening guys thinks that he could get to this very tip and match it on the other side. I don't know how those guys match each side to create a perfect apex. I don't know how they do it. I've never been able, I guess, I don't know, too shaky, too whatever, to do whetstones. That's the reason I do this. I'm doing this for a YouTube subscriber. I'm doing a whole entire box of his knives and everything's been fine. Everything's been fine. I put some serious edges on a couple of his knives and then a couple others. He just wants kind of a utility edge. Maybe take it up to six, 800 grit diamond. Uh, I've tried everything on this and I just can't get it. Now, here's the funny thing. Now, I do a lot of fillet knives, and I do my own fillet knives. And when you have a long, flexible, seven, eight inch, long, flexible knife, I can do it in, in halves because at least that knife has a nice straight edge here. I'm pretty much done with this. I'm not going to mess it up or do any more to it. It's got an edge. Let me pop it out of the vise here. All right, it's got an edge and it's sharp. Is it sharper than when he gave it to me, which was a cold steel factory edge? This is OS 8A. So yeah, let me get a piece of paper. My, I always just do a paper test that's sort of my little benchmark. 
after a paper test, I do, I usually do a, uh, you know, like a shaving sharp. And then after a shaving sharp, and many times on my own knives, I've done hair whittling sharp. But let's see how this is. This thing is made for doing this. All right. It ain't made for, I mean, just for, it's not a super cutter knife. It's not supposed to be a super cutter. I'm sure he'll be happy. I don't know if I'm even going to touch this other one. Because I don't want to mess it up. Especially since this one has the black blade. I think I'll strop it for him with some diamond paste and see if I can just put a little more sheen and stuff like that on this. But I don't know if I'm going to put the diamonds to this because I don't want to mess it up. One thing you try to do with customer knives, and this is sort of the rule that I kind of came up with when it comes to doing knife sharpening for other people. And I think it's a good rule to have is make their knives sharper than when they brought them to you but please don't eat their blades away to nothing all right i do not want for them to go home with so much less steel than that they brought to, brought to me so let's see what this can do let's just see All right, it's, this is foam book. See, it's okay until it hits that spot. All right, so. Okay, a little tough here. 25 degrees behind the edge is what it was set on on the gen 3 pro which doesn't always correlate exactly to here i didn't check that oh come on all right it's doing some curls here but i mean it's thick behind the edge big time so, you know, as they say, that ain't no slicer. I'm going to quit there, but this video is about what is the toughest knife that I've tried to sharpen. And I don't want to burn off a bunch of steel. And I can literally see, if you look right in the light, when you're sharpening your knives, and you look down on the edge and if you see a shiny spot and I see one right there towards the tip that is the burr now I'm gonna try to do a little bit more here with my just hand and I'm gonna see if I could do something like with this other one here I'm gonna try to sharpen this just by stropping with some diamond paste I'm going to see if I can get that burr a little less because see I don't want to burn off that tip because that tip is the stabbing tip. All right so that's just some of the stuff that you run into. These type of knives uh, I hope you can see it I'm going to show you right here. There's the flat spot that I can grab with the vise that much so reaching out there I would have to just absolutely re profile or something that entire tip and I don't want to do that I don't want to take off a bunch of unnecessary steel because this is a stabber this isn't made to be no super cutter what this could be this is a jumbo steak knife maybe you cut a little steak wham 
and you know go to the Roman feast and bring your tie light so there you go it's just some of the stuff you run into every once in a while and what it does also and other guys who sharpen you know uh, kind of precision angle sharpen probably see a lot of brand new knives where the edges don't even come close to matching you know you put it in here and you're checking it like I was in the very beginning of this video putting the marker on it and on one side you see a totally different edge angle than the other side so what do you do if it's not too bad you you try to match those angles if you can if it's really bad then we're starting to get into a whole nother ball of wax and that's uh that's a decision you have to make there so this is a big sticker and this has to remain a big sticker so i got some buck 110s to do uh i'm very familiar with them boy oh boy oh boy since I believe the bucks are always kind of hand ground just from my own collection of bucks that I've had in the past I've had numerous bucks that those edges aren't close to the same so all I'm gonna do I'm not taking a bunch of steel off of those I'm not getting into all that you could spend an hour and a half messing around with it I'm gonna try just to put a nice good utility edge on it if it's if they're not very sharp and I believe half of them are brand new so that will be the next adventure so thanks for stopping by the wolf den here this is quality knife sharpening Jacksonville Florida I'll see you on the next one thanks